pulse detonation wave engines. Uh, this is very, very high-speed vehicles, uh, Mach 6, Mach 7, uh, across the Pacific Ocean in a very short period of time. And these are the things that the New York Times noted that we're going to have to be making our, on our own to oppose what the Chinese are going to do. Mm. So we have taught them okay, how to make things that are going to kill Americans, likely, in the future. And also, early on, they literally stole from my bookcase a segment of an F-101 engine combustor, which at that time was the brand new engine on the B-1 bomber, and it was the latest technology available. Another was that a student that uh, had come in over, or um, how did... Right, he came over and went back, and I noticed, you know, a few weeks later when I went to get it off bookcase to use my lecture, it wasn't there anymore. And I would therefore conclude that it probably went back to China. Mm. And another interesting device, which, which Doug is, is really an expert on, and that's these MEMS devices, microelectromechanical systems, which are solid-state electronics, and Doug can address that issue quite, quite well. Please. Okay. I, well, actually, the uh, uh, Ardesta, which is the, uh, the venture capital firm for Rick Snyder, uh, has invested heavily in MEMS, which are called the microelectromechanical systems. And essentially what That's this... Governor Rick Snyder. That's Governor, Governor, Governor Snyder, here in yes. Michigan, right. Okay. But, but the, the MEMS technology is essentially to be able to put small uh, devices, small machines, onto computer chips. So um, Dicera uh, was a technology that was developed at the University of Michigan uh, using funding from DARPA, which is the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. So it clearly was developed with the idea that it had military applications. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and so then uh, Rick Snyder's company invested into a startup company, which they called Dicera, uh, which, which then produced uh, a, a replacement for what are called quartz crystal technology. Mm -hmm. Most electronic uh, systems have to have some type of a timer, and that timer has generally been a quartz crystal. But now they can build a, a what's called a resonator uh, onto a computer chip, makes it much smaller, makes it much easier to integrate with the uh, uh, with the other electronics, and and so one of the first applications of that was uh, a, a company that they partnered with uh, to develop uh, the telemetry systems for smart munitions. So smart artillery shells, smart bombs, etc., uh, need some type of a of a very stable um, timing device in order to be able to calculate their trajectories and all that sort of thing. So, so, the, so clearly it was a, a military technology. But it's, it's what we call dual-use technology. So it also has uses in things like cell phones. So now Dicera has, has gone to China, set up an office in China, which during the gubernatorial campaign uh, was described as a five-person sales office. But it's five engineers, and when you look at the, the, the business model for Dicera, Di Dicera is, um, they don't make any of their own computer chips. But what they do is that they teach other computer chip manufacturers how to use their technology on their systems and, and then pay them royalties. So five engineers in China can teach an awful lot of Chinese companies how to integrate their technology into their computer chips. Well, and it was my understanding, I read a little something about that. Rick Snyder, when he was still uh, in campaigning, was confronted with that, and he, he basically said, oh, what office? You know, it's just, he, he characterized it as just a, a little sales office kind of thing, but, you know, um, then later on the flip side, uh, he was confronted with, with the fact that, that uh, he, had, he had said that they're really doing some big things over there in China, and, you know, so he kind of playing the field on both right. sides of the fence whenever... Well, during, during the debate, he claimed that it was untrue. Mm -hmm. Then after the debate, the uh, campaign said, well, yes, it is true, but it's only a five-person sales office. Got it. Well, uh, and, um, and he's a, he happens to be a University of Michigan graduate, from what I understand, too, isn't he? Governor, uh, Governor Snyder? Sure. Two degrees from the University Two of Michigan. Degrees. Two okay. of them. Yes. Yes. So he's got some pretty strong ties, and, and uh, uh, this, this techn he's, he's helping to facilitate this transfer of technology and knowledge, uh, know-how, uh, over there. And, and it's not just um, uh, the timers kind of thing, but they're, they're trying to make things smaller and lighter so that they can fit on the end of, a, of, of one of these missile 
uh, noses and uh, be able to send it further uh, to to uh, destroy, you know. Well, the, more. The, these these dual use technologies require an export license, and we talked before that that has to come from the Department of Commerce. Okay. Well, we've tried to find out whether or not uh, his company, Dicera, actually applied for and was granted a, a, a license to send that technology to China. Uh, all they'll tell us is that they've, that they've followed uh, all U.S. laws, but they won't produce a license, and they won't say that they have a license. Hmm. These precision-guided munitions in which these components go have totally revolutionized warfare. Uh, you can almost state it, you know, one bomb, one hit on where you want it. It's not like carpet bombing where maybe one of them will hit it out of a thousand. Right. But warfare has, has truly changed. And there's another interesting situation <clears throat> at the University of Michigan in that the current chief scientist of the U.S. Air Force was a professor at the University of Michigan, uh, Werner Dahm. Mm -hmm. And what, during his tenure at the University of Michigan, he had a very close relationship with what we call the Dean for China, Jun Ni, uh, who basically runs the Chinese campuses. They had a, a joint uh, high-tech firm, spin-off firm. And the, one of the, the things that, that Doug brought up is these beltway-type firms where, you know, you have entanglements and commercialization, and who knows where this basic research ends up. It can end up in a position, <clears throat> okay, that can hurt us. And back in the Cold War days, if I met a Russian at a meeting, I had to come back and fill out a report, who it was, what we talked about, da 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 And I find it very peculiar that we have a chief scientist of the Air Force who had a very intimate business relation with a Chinese national who spends a great deal of time in China right now. Okay? Well, I know that the government is, is in bed with, with corporations and the government's in bed with the with the uh, U of M and and I'm sure that they visit a lot of those football games too you know <laughs> well who knows what goes on in the skybox mm. okay but Warner Dom's predecessor as chief scientist of the Air Force was Mark Lewis who was a professor from the University of Maryland and he came to visit and give a seminar and I said to him Mark we can't continue transferring this technology and he says you know it's something we can't do very much about because the Chinese are a, a very important financial component for the support of the U.S. university system now. And the University of Maryland, we know, is another one of the very bad actors um, in transferring technology to China. Gosh. Well, um, I think that this might be a good time to uh, put a little close on uh, uh, this particular segment. I'd like to give you just another quick word if, if you had anything. Um, uh, because we will be coming back for another segment of Power Corrupts. Uh, any, any final word for this segment? I would like to recommend a series of, on YouTube uh, of videos made by Vince Wade, mm -hmm. who was a local television uh, investigative reporter, Channel 2 and 7. And Vince put together a series of eight documentaries on this theft of technology from American universities by the Chinese students. And he was the person who filmed our retired FBI uh, chief standing in front of Burton Tower, and it's, it's, a, it's a very good I've seen uh, series mm -hmm. which shows what, what they're up to, what they're stealing, and you can watch it at your leisure uh, on YouTube, Vince Wade. Do we have okay. a, a website uh, uh, that you can if get? You, if you Google Vince Wade on uh, uh, videos, uh, you'll find us. That's V-I-N-C-E-W-A-D-E. -E. -E. Yes. Got it. Okay. Oh, I think he's got a company, Wade, uh, Vince Wade Multimedia. That's correct. That might, it, dot com may get you there. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, we'll be back uh, with another segment of Power Corrupts again. Thank you for joining us.
Hi there. We're back with Power Corrupts again, and I'm David Scheid, here interviewing former University of Michigan professors Bill Kaufman and Doug Smith, who have decided to take a clear stand as whistleblowers on the topic of China and its threat to the United States national security through espionage, intelligence, and what amounts to the selling out of America by the corporate elite. Remember Julius and Ethel Rosenberg? They were Americans branded as spies at the Los Alamos Laboratory, who were executed after World War II for a conspiracy to commit espionage. Yet today, tens of thousands of Chinese negotiate, scheme, and steal away technological secrets of American scholars and inventors while public universities, private corporations, and governments are only too willing to comply. For the American corporate elite, this is business as usual, allowing Chinese to steal our national trade and security secrets without any intervention whatsoever from our government. In fact, the so-called revolving door between government and corporate enterprises shows us that government officials themselves are instrumentally participating in this rush to greed and the undermining of our national security interests. Let's take the newly elected Michigan governor, for example. During the recent gubernatorial race, Democratic candidate Verge Bernero brought the voters' attention to the fact that his opponent, Republican Rick Snyder, was co-founder of a company, Desera, which is helping Chinese companies to compete globally. Using state-of-the-art technology developed at the University of Michigan, Rick Snyder is helping the Chinese to win market share using venture capital from another company that he co-founded, Ardesta LLC. An October 2010 article from the Detroit News pointed out that when first confronted with this American company, Desera, operating in China, the now newly elected Michigan governor denied such an affiliation until also confronted with a news release that Desera had published just a few months prior in July. On Desera's own website, the news release stated, by sharing DeSera's expertise in semiconductor timing, power reduction, and MEMS technology, and by sponsoring local research and development, DeSera is helping Chinese businesses to compete and win in the global marketplace. Yet even in the face of this reminder, our illustrious new Michigan governor intentionally misled the Michigan taxpayers by claim that the business office operating in China is nothing more than a small office with a card table in it, which is a far cry from the state-of-the-art facility with engineers, equipment, and researchers to support chip and module integration, high-definition 3D video technology, radio frequency, and smart grid design, which is what came out in another press release. Oh, I hate lying politicians especially those who lie by certain omissions. They are as bad as all the lawyers working here in Michigan as members of the corrupted Michigan State Bar. Where's the oversight here? Want to know something? There's not any. Clearly, as we have seen from these past few Power Corrupts again segments, it is imperative that Americans take these matters very seriously. Though we might do what we can to express our humanitarian concerns for our fellow human beings in other areas of the world through action, we must not put entrepreneurial business interest ahead of our own national security, the future of our American children, and the economic welfare of this nation. When we do, as some have clearly have been, we face the possibility that soon we will come to suffer the same consequences the Chinese were faced with at the end of their cultural revolution. Currently, the attitude of U.S. elected officials concerning national security and our survival is quite perplexing and contradictory. The behavior and activities currently exploited by the People's Republic of China would not have been tolerated at all on the part of the Soviets during the Cold War in which Dr. Kaufman was